1974, Americans everywhere were determined to preserve their human rights. At Williamsburg, Virginia, cradle of our democracy, Governor Lord Dunmore sought to quiet rebellious sentiment by giving a reception for the militant champions of liberty and freedom. Here are more guests. Who may be? May I present Mr. James Madison and Mr. Thomas Jefferson? Both of these gentlemen are members of the Virginia Assembly. Gentlemen, I welcome you to my home. We welcome you to Virginia, my lady. And to the hearts of her people. Oh, you overwhelm me. I must confess I hadn't expected to find such charming manners among the colonials. We colonists have learned to call ourselves by another name. Americans. You see, my lady, both of these gentlemen are firm believers in the doctrine of equal rights. A dangerous doctrine, as the people of Massachusetts have learned to their sorrow. Dangerous to tyrants, my lord. Tyrants, sir? Are you implying that His Majesty... My implication is a friendly one, Your Excellency. A friendly warning. My dear? Is Colonel Mason here? Yes, he here. Right reception room, sir. Colonel Mason? Colonel Mason? Yes, Carter, yes. What is it? Gentlemen, General Gage has closed the port of Boston and deprived the people of all their civil rights. Massachusetts has sent a courier asking the aid of Virginia. And she shall have our aid. Yes. By all means. With all our hearts. We shall make the cause of Massachusetts our own. The colonies must declare their rights and prepare to defend them. I warn you, gentlemen, I will tolerate no seditious activities. If the people of Virginia imitate the rebels of Boston, I shall exercise the same royal decrees as General Gage. Which would be most unwise, Your Excellency. We still respect the mother country, but our hearts are with the homeland. Don't forget what I told your lady, sir. You are now dealing with Americans. Good night, Your Excellency. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. The patriotic colony of Massachusetts knew the meaning of rule by force. Under a disparate royal governor, the rights of man had become a bitter farce. The might of tyranny, a cruel reality. There was no freedom of religion. No freedom of speech. No freedom of the press. No security against searches and seizures without a warrant. No trial by jury. Alleged political prisoners were transported overseas. Across the sea, before the British Parliament, Edmund Burke strongly condemned the cruel oppression of the American colonists. Our hold on the American colonies is in the close affection that grows from common names, from kindred blood, from similar privileges and equal protection. These are ties which are strong as links of iron. Let the colonies always keep their idea of civil rights associated with this government, and no force under heaven will tear them from their allegiance. Slavery they can have anywhere. It is a weed that grows in every soil. But freedom they can have from none but us. English privileges have made America all that it is. English privileges alone will make it all that it can be. Privileges, is it? There will be no privileges for rebels. See that my decrees are enforced. Yes, Your Majesty. But, sire, such a policy will lead to revolution and useless bloodshed. I suggest temperance. And I will use force. That will be all, gentlemen. Your Majesty. You can lay to it that Madison Jefferson and those other hotheads are already plotting to make trouble for us. But they won't be so keen for it after you've executed this decree. What decree is that, Your Lord? It arrived this morning with the other dispatches from London. England has ordered her royal governors to seize all arms in the colonies. With prudence, of course. That's simple enough for us. Here is the key to the powder house. And there's an English man of war anchored in the York River. Exactly, my dear Marlon. I'll get word to Captain Collins in the morning. We'll attend to our hot-headed colonists tomorrow night. Meanwhile, in the Virginia House of Burgesses... Please, please. You may proceed, Mr. Jefferson. And to further express our sympathy with the unfortunate people of Boston, I propose that we designate a day of fasting. Prayer. And that we follow it with a day of action which will send them all the arms and ammunition that we can spare from our own defense. <laughs>
can't be blamed for what happens now. Nor will we be by all fair-minded Englishmen. Men like Burke and Chatham will always champion us in Parliament. We'll meet tonight at Raleigh's Tavern. Pass the word. Tonight at Raleigh's Tavern. Tonight at Raleigh's Tavern. Tonight at Raleigh's Tavern. To prevent a repetition in Virginia of the intolerable acts in Massachusetts, I move that we draw up a declaration of rights declaration to be known as the Fairfax Resolves. I second that motion. Gentlemen, you've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye! Contrary? The motion is carried. That, that all men are created equally free and independent and have certain inherent natural rights, among which are the enjoyment of life and liberty. That all power is by God and nature vested in the people, and that government is instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the people. But whenever any government shall be found contrary to these purposes, a majority of the community has an inalienable right to reform, alter, or abolish it. As it should be. That in all capital or criminal prosecutions, a man has a right to a speedy trial by an impartial jury of his peers. That excessive bail ought not to be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. That freedom of the press and freedom of speech are two of the greatest bulwarks of liberty and can never be restrained but by despotic governments. While the Virginians kept a secret rendezvous at Raleigh Tavern, their royal governor was already confiscating the powder so vital to their safety. Once we have the powder on board ship, they'll change their tune to God save the king. I don't like it, sir. There's apt to be a nasty mess if the Indians get rid of this. An officer showing sympathy for rebels, Collins? No, sir. For their wives and families, as well as those of your lordship. You forget, Captain. His Excellency and all loyal Virginians depend upon you for protection. Thank you for reminding me. Your Excellency, I want to show you a little device I had installed. Just in case our rebel friends get too curious. Ah, yes. You see, I fastened the end of this thong to the inside latch of the door. And then, when they open it... They receive a most proper reception. Very good indeed. Take the low road. It would be the devil to pay if our cargo is discovered. Very good, sir. Oh, oh. exercise of religion. Finally, I move that these resolves be submitted to a convention of all the counties of Virginia. I second the resolution and move that the Virginia Convention propose a Continental Congress in order that each colony may draft a similar declaration of rights. See who it is. Who's there? Anderson. James, what kept you? Listen, they've stolen our powder. They're taking it to Captain Collins' ship. Gentlemen, we're almost entirely in arm. Violence now can only result in disaster. There's apt to be plenty of violence when the people hear their powder is gone. Perhaps the governor can explain. Then he'd better do it quickly. Therefore, my lord, we demand the reason for your action. You demand? Yes. By the authority of the people of Williamsburg. Who have the power to enforce their rights if we fail here. Of course, gentlemen, of course. You see, I've been informed of a possible slave uprising in Surrey County. Surrey County has sufficient arms and powder for just such emergencies. Yes, I suppose she has. I should have thought of that. Well, I'll return the powder at once. You'll attend to this matter, Captain Collins? Yes, my lord. Thank you. Gentlemen? Thank you, Your Excellency. Oh, uh, Collins. Yes, sir? Come back here. Where do you think you're going? At your orders, my lord, to return the powder. Don't be stupid. They're traitors, the lot of them. And they'll be treated as such. Now, what do you mean, sir? I mean that we've no intention of returning the powder. Always prating of their rights. 
I'll teach them a better regard for royal rights. That's all, Collins. Yes, my lord. At St. John's Church in Richmond, Patrick Henry, Virginia patriot, inspired even the conservatives with the ringing passion of his oratory. Is life so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death! <laughs> Fired by Patrick Henry's speech and convinced that Lord Dunmore had no intention of returning their powder, the Virginians were quick to act. If the governor wanted war, they were more than willing to oblige him. And from every part of the colony, they stormed angrily toward Williamsburg. Coming, sir. I'm mobbed with them from all over the town. I suggest you send your wife and daughters to my ship at once. Where's Morgan? He was going to talk to them. He was going to stop them. There's no stopping them now. I have a carriage waiting for you and the ladies, and you will give the order. You have it. We get me out of here yes, at sir. once. Hey, listen, everyone. Listen, listen. What is it? Listen, read it. What to say, Mr. E? Most of us here can read. You read it for me. It is hereby ordered that all arms in this colony are to be turned over to a representative of the crown. And in support of this proclamation, I further declare that if any injury is offered to myself or to my office, I will proclaim liberty to the slaves and reduce Williamsburg to ashes. And sign Lord Dunmore, Royal Governor of Virginia. Unless a disturbance stops at once, I'll take measures to arrest a lot of you. We'll stop it when we get our powder back and not before. Yeah. Only a small part of the powder was taken. Not enough to justify all this commotion. Perhaps you'd be willing to prove that, Mr. Morland. Why? Sir, are you doubting my word? Of course we doubt it. You got the keys to the powder house, ain't you? Well... Ain't you? Yes. Was Royal Commissioner Williamsburg? I don't know. I'll do nothing of the kind. Open her up before I start carving on your gizzard. Yeah! <laughs> I warn you, you're committing an unlawful act. We ain't all that, but hope not. No, no. Let Mr. Madison or Mr. Jefferson do it. Very well. Begging your pardon, gentlemen. He says he represents the government. Let him go in first. No, 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 I won't. I won't. Gentlemen, looks like Lord Dunmore's going to have company. Wait, wait, I've got some good news. Massachusetts has struck the first blow for liberty. The minute men of Lexington have beaten the British regular. My blame his lordship will listen to reason now. He already has. I met him and his Marines heading for the river. They must be aboard ship by this time. Well, that's one weasel saved his skin. Good riddance, too, I reckon. <laughs> A long war for independence was fought and won. The sacred rights of freedom had been secured for American posterity. But in 1787, when the federal constitution failed to include those rights, the people rose in angry protest. Virginia. The Fairfax resolves are the basis of every state constitution. We demand their inclusion in the federal constitution. Massachusetts. Massachusetts knows the meaning of oppression. She will never approve a document which does not safeguard human rights. New York. We fought one war for the rights of man, but we'll fight again unless those rights are preserved. North Carolina. North Carolina will never ratify a constitution that does not include a bill of rights. The constitution had become the supreme law of the land, but the demand for a federal bill of rights threatened to destroy it. In 1789, before the first constitutional congress in New York City, James Madison introduced the amendments that were to preserve the inalienable rights of a freedom-loving people. In approving this Bill of Rights, we have executed the will of the people. We are a young democracy, an unwanted child in a family of nations that ruled by force and oppression, a 
And mark my words, so will it ever be. From this day on, we must guard with our lives that freedom which costs so much in blood to earn. From this day on, we must be prepared not only to repel the enemy outside our borders, but to uncover and crush the more dangerous enemy within. This Bill of Rights secures to us the God-given freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of person. Let these principles be the creed of our political faith. And should we wander from them in moments of error or of alarm, let us hasten to retrace our steps and to regain that road which leads to safety, liberty, and peace. <laughs> Let's see if I can go back. Mm -hmm.